good praise and worship. We're, we just want to move in the flow of the Spirit. So if, if songs change, if patterns change and things like that, don't be upset about any of that. That's all good. Amen? We're going to talk about the door of the sheep. And hold on because this message uh, will make a difference in your life. Let me start by saying this. It's not necessarily in the introduction. But I've got to tell you why you should listen. This is why you should listen. Jesus said, the thief has come but to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Now, many people believe that that comes just because they're saved. And then when they don't experience the abundant life being saved, they get disappointed in their salvation. And they get disappointed in God. Because they say, I'm saved, and you said, you've come that I might have life and have it more abundantly, but I don't feel like I'm having abundant life. Well, abundant life is a conditional promise. Eternal life is through the blood of Jesus Christ. And it's the free gift of God. Come on, give the Lord some praise. You know, if you believe in Jesus, you are unconditionally given eternal life. That's God's gift. Amen? And there's not a condition on that, but one. Believe in your heart, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? And you shall be saved and you shall receive heaven is a gift but without condition uh, other than those conditions believe in Jesus confess however that's as far as many Christians go they don't understand Jesus as shepherd they don't understand Jesus as door of the sheep they don't understand I'll just put it on that first row they don't understand that to walk in abund- the abundant life he promised There are things we must do beyond just being saved. Amen. So that's what we're going to talk about. And that's why it's important to talk about uh, this today. Because how many of you are sick and tired of being sick and tired? How many of you are sick and tired of not having any real joy? Not having any real peace? Amen. And as Christians, we're not supposed to be that way. Because God was interested not only in getting us to, into heaven, but He wants to give us the abundant life. He wants to do that for us. Amen? But it doesn't mean that it, we can just experience it without doing anything. In other words, we have a part. Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. There is only one way to salvation, folks. Amen? There's only one way to be saved. Jesus Christ is the door to salvation. He is the only way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Amen. I don't apologize for that. Uh, The Word says that thieves and robbers, thieves and robbers, anyone who says that they're the door to salvation before or after Jesus Christ is a thief and a liar. Amen? Jesus said, all who came before me are are thieves and robbers. So all these false messiahs, Sun Young Moon, Jim Jones, and in Jesus' day, right before Jesus came, Israel had experienced Messiah fever. There were any number of, of people who rose up and said, I'm the Messiah, I'm the Messiah, I'm the Messiah. Some thought the Maccabees were the Messiah. Uh, when they came along and, and, and threw out one of the oppressors and, and all kinds of things. And they all proved to be false messiahs because they weren't true messiahs. Amen? And what I want you to... Uh, well, Jesus will lead us to salvation and what? What does it say up there? Is it up there yet? Okay. I might be ahead. Jesus will lead us to salvation and What? Green pastures, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. And he will go in and out and find pasture. So it's not just about heaven, but it's also about finding greener pastures. Amen? Satan and all false religions will only steal, kill, and destroy. The thief does not come except to steal, kill, and destroy. 
Many false religions are man's search for God. Some of them are just pure out and out cons. I'm sorry to tell any Mormons this, but Mormon faith is basically a pure out and out con. Formulated by a con man, invented by a con man, and, and, uh, it's, it was, uh, and Scientology is the same thing. That's a modern cult. It's a total con. But there are people who genuinely searched for God. Uh, some of these people genuinely searched for God. And they made an attempt to find God. You know, uh, Buddha probably in his heart made an attempt to find God. And others have made an attempt to find God. They're man searching for God. But ultimately, they, they won't give you what Jesus can give you. They will only steal and rob from you. Amen? The only one who can give you what Jesus uh, will give you is Jesus Christ himself. Because in Christ's coming, man's not searching for God. This is the difference between Christianity and everything else. In Christ's coming, God is searching for us. Amen? God is searching for us. He said, man's been looking for me and he hadn't done a very good job. I'm going to go down and find them. Amen? So let's go on. Satan and all false religions will only steal, kill, and destroy. Other religions and false teachers are, of course... Now, when I say this, I don't mean all others. Uh, you know, they're false. But there are those that are pure and outright uh, of the devil. Amen? Pure and outright of the devil. And, and uh, there are many followers of false teaching. You know, you, you can tell whether a teaching is false or whether a teaching is true by this. If it steals and robs from you, it's false. If it brings you abundance and joy, it's true. Amen? Amen? Like legalism, you know, that's a branch of Christianity that steals the liberty of Christ, that makes salvation by works. I've never met too many joyful legalistic people all bound up with religious legalism. Amen? Because they think they've got to earn their way to heaven uh, by living a certain way and by a certain standards and all this other stuff. They think salvation is by works, and it is not. Amen? It will rob you of joy. It will rob you of love. It will rob you of peace. It will kill these things and ultimately destroy them. Amen. So that's one of the ways to tell the true from the false. Jesus has come so that we might, so that we can experience life more joyfully and have life in abundance until it overflows. Amen. I've come that you might have life and that they might have it uh, more abundantly. Now, my question is real simple. Does this describe your life right now? Is it joyful? Is it abundant? And is it overflowing? That's what I ask those people that hopefully are turning in now or later on Ustream. Is your life joyful? Is your life abundant? Is your life overflowing? Because if it is not, something is wrong. Something may not be wrong with your salvation. I'm not saying you ain't saved. You know, if you believe in Jesus Christ, that he died for your sins, that he rose from the dead, you know, if you've accepted Jesus as your Savior, you can be saved. But you can be saved and be miserable. I've met a lot of miserable Christians, haven't you? And, and lots of times they'll make you miserable. Amen? It's like misery loves they're miserable, they want to make you miserable. Amen? I don't like to be miserable. How about you? Let's go on. So does that describe you now? Just take a, take a moment or two and think about that as we go to the next one. What's wrong? What's wrong? Why is my life not filled with joy and peace and abundance? Why is my life not overflowing? Jesus wants to give me that. Well, this is why. Jesus said, and the sheep hear his voice. Amen? And the sheep hear his voice. You see, what we're coming down to is this. You've got to learn to hear his voice, and you've got to learn to let him lead. You see, the problem is 
too many Christians are just sheep following the rest of the sheep. And sheep will follow sheep right to destruction. Have you ever noticed, and, I, and, and this first started happening here years ago, the pastor of one of the largest Pentecostal churches in this town that had been growing and growing and growing and doing really well, all of a sudden he started losing some of his prominent families to a non-Pentecostal church, to a church that discouraged everything Pentecostal, discouraged tongues. If you go there and speak in tongues, they're going to tell you stop. If, uh, you know, they discourage everything Pentecostal. And I, I'm talking 15 years ago, this guy asked me, he said, I don't understand it, Pastor King. How can, how, how can people leave one of the most Pentecostal churches in town, one of the most Pentecostal worship service, one of the most, Pente- and go to a non-Pentecostal church? I'll tell you exactly how. Dumb sheep following dumb sheep. Amen. A lot of churches begin to grow only because the sheep start going there. And then somebody goes, hey, that's where all the sheep are at. Let's go hang out with the sheep. I remember a story years ago. A man had had uh, inherited a sheep uh, ranch or farm or I don't know what they call sheep things uh, in Scotland and uh, from uh, like a grandparent. And he had visited a few times as a... Uh, as a boy, but he was an American, <clears throat> and he didn't think he wanted anything to do with sheep, you know, and, and Scotland, a kind of a rugged area, and, and but he had to go over to settle the estate. He had to go over to take care of things, and one night there was a storm, and, and the par- part of Scotland they were raising sheep in was very uh, rocky and very, uh, you know, lots of trails and all this other stuff and a, a few small streams. Well, one of the shepherds came knocking on his door and saying, uh, the sheep are all falling in a swollen stream. And he said, they're what? <clears throat> one of the dumb sheep had decided to walk across the stream. <clears throat> and, and they've not been sheared yet, so they're in their full glory of wool. And the rest of the sheep go, well, if it's good enough for Bob, it must be good enough for me. And so the rest of the sheep started following the dumb leader straight into the swollen stream. And they're being washed downstream. Their wool is soaking full of water. They're plunging beneath the water. And this man and a few other of his shepherds had to dive into that stormy water all night long saving sheep. One after another just plowing in and plowing in and plowing in to their death without a shepherd. And so that night something happened in him. A connection between him and the sheep and probably almost an ancestral gene kicked in. And suddenly he decided, I'm not going back to America. I'm staying here and and taking care of these sheep because these dumb critters need me. (laughs) Amen. Amen. They need me. We need Jesus. I'm not talking about me as the shepherd. I'm a dumb critter too. I need Jesus. I'll follow the rest of the sheep off the cliff without Jesus. Amen. We all need Jesus. He's the shepherd. We need to hear His voice. Come on, give the Lord some praise. In, in ancient Israel, in this day at least, shepherds led by their voice. They didn't drive the sheep. I don't even know if herding dogs are, uh, were a thing in Israel because the law was real restrictive about dogs. So uh, and you never really see in Israel herding uh, dogs, you know, and in other cultures where they didn't have these restrictions against dogs, you did. And the herding dogs, like those sh- sheep dogs, They are smart animals, and they kind of help corral the sheep, and they kind of drive the sheep, and the shepherd leads from the back. And for many of us, that's our picture. Not so in Israel, not in this day. The shepherds led by their voice. The sheep followed the shepherd. Amen? How many of you know that sweet little picture of, of the shepherd with the little lamb wrapped around his neck? Amen? Isn't that darling? 
How many of you think that's just so sweet? That's such a sweet, gentle shepherd. And I want to be that little lamb around Jesus' neck. You know, uh, the shepherd broke that little lamb's leg and set it so he wouldn't wander off and wrapped him around his neck like a scarf so that he would bond the shepherd. And so that wherever the shepherd went, that sheep went. Amen? That sheep went. Amen? So that picture, that loving shepherd with that little sheep wrapped around his arm, first thing he'd done is he'd hobbled that sheep. He had, he had wounded that sheep so it wouldn't separate from the shepherd. See, sometimes even as Christians... We go through things that are very painful. We go through things that are very hurtful. And all Jesus is trying to do is, is trying to say, hey, you need me. You need to come to me. You need to bond to me. Amen? If you'll just bond to me and he- learn to hear my voice, I will lead you to greener pastures. Come on, give the Lord some praise. I could go on and on and on with this lesson, but let's go on. How do we hear his voice? Well, Sometimes we sound like broken records, but, you know, number one is the Bible. Amen? Number one is the Bible. Get in your Bible. Read your Bible. If the version you've got is wearing you out, change it up. Go buy a totally new version. Some of you need to put, if you haven't picked up your King James in uh, almost since King James, you need to uh, put it on the shelf as a bookmark. And you need to go buy you a new living translation. Something that will make the Bible more alive and and bring it in more uh, common English and just to spark your interest afresh. Amen. Uh, Get a study Bible. Get a devotional Bible. Change up the way you read. Find the reading pattern and study pattern that works for you. It's real simple. We want, oh, God, I want the abundant life. I want love, peace, and joy. But I'm going to give as much of my extra free time to television and TV shows and things like that as I can. We could compare, if we looked at the average Christian, how much time you spend on your computer or spend in front of the TV to how much time you spend in the Word, where would you be? If we sow to the flesh, what are we going to reap? Flesh. Why ain't anything going right? Why can't I hear God? Why aren't I being led? Why isn't my life any better? Well, what are you sowing to? What are you sowing to? Just look at your time. Amen? Just where is my time invested? It's like this revival. You know, this is like a season of farming. I was watching a show on the Middle Ages the other day, and, and uh, this is what happened. They were hectically busy twice a year, and the rest of, in the winter months they sat around with nothing to do. Because in farming in those days, you know, you only had two seasons you had to be busy. One was planting it, preparing the ground and planting it, and the other was harvest. And there was a long time you didn't do much of anything. But if you didn't work really hard, every able-bodied man, woman, and child helped in the harvest. Every able-bodied man, woman, and child helped in the sowing. Amen? And, and, but later there came a reaping. Some people won't come to a revival because they're going, well, I didn't get that much out of it. Uh, you know, I'm all these young people excited. Yeah, that's pretty to see. But, you know, I'm glad they're here, not the bars. But it didn't do anything for me. You're sowing time and effort. You're sowing to the Spirit. You may not reap that harvest for months. Amen? You may not reap that harvest for months. But you're sowing into the Spirit. You can never do wrong by sowing into the Spirit. Because when you sow into the Spirit, what are you going to reap? Spirit, life, abundance. When you sow into the flesh, what are you going to reap? You're going to reap the flesh. Amen. So find Bible reading that works for you. Uh, Do some Bible study. Don't just read the Word, study the Word. Don't just read the Word, do the Word. One of the worst things to do as a Christian is we read and read and read and, and do almost nothing. God ain't interested in how much of the Word you've read. God is interested only, listen to me, only 
and how much of the word you do. He could care less if you read the Bible every week. What he wants to know is, are you doing what it says? Now, why does he care? Oh, well, I won't go to heaven if I don't do what it says. No, you will go to heaven if you believe in Jesus Christ as your Savior. There are lots of things the Bible says that you don't have to do to go to heaven. Amen? But guess what? You're not going to experience the abundant life. The Bible, you know, uh, mine's up there now. Who's got a Bible? Raise that. That's the owner's manual. That's the owner's manual. That's the builder's manual. Amen? That's the vehicle book. How many of you have ever had a car and you tried to run it and didn't change the oil? Amen? Or didn't follow the guidelines or didn't read the manual? Amen? You're a pretty complex piece of machinery. Amen? We're complex. Turn to somebody and say, oh, you're so complex. We're complex machinery. And if we don't go to the instruction manual and learn how we ought to be operated, we're going to mess up. Amen. And then we mess up and then we get mad at God. Why did you do this to me? Why did you mess me up? Uh, Manual dummy. Follow the instructions. Follow the instructions. Prayer. We learn to hear His voice by prayer. Prayer is not just shotgunning your request to God. Prayer is learning to listen to God speak to you. That takes faith. It takes faith. It's mystical. Some men absolutely don't want anything in the world to do with that. I ain't going to hear no voice speak in my head. I'm not going to listen to nothing, you know, because... For us men, we got a lot of voices going on in our heads. And they're not always good voices. <laughs> Amen, brothers. Come on. And so sometimes we've, we kind of learn to turn off the stuff that goes on in our head. You know, turn that off. Because, you know, uh, some poor woman trying to drive in front of me during that snowstorm Tuesday night. I was a real Christian. I was just blessing her up a, up a storm. She was stopping Larry with a SUV with a low tar, getting stuck, rolling back on the ice towards my car. I said, don't stop, you idiot! <laughs> so, you know, I was listening to that voice in my head. <laughs> but what we need, uh, several times, uh, what we need to learn to do is learn to... That's one of the reasons why you need the foundation of the word. When you have the foundation of the word, you can that is how you judge what pops into your head. Amen? That's how you know. You begin you have a foundation to know. A thought pops in and instantly it's filtered through the word. Well, that ain't a God. Rocket science. That ain't a God. Amen. Because we know enough of the word to know what is. Amen. We need to listen to the Holy Spirit. You know, again, that takes practice. And, and let me tell you, it's real simple with the Holy Spirit. It's real simple. Obey, and he'll speak. Disobey, and he won't. It's real simple. He will not talk to you if you don't do what he asks you to do. Amen? Amen? So uh, listening to the Holy Spirit is simple. It, just say, Holy Spirit, speak to me. And, and, you know, he will. And the key is, though, you need to, if, if he begins to do it, you need to do what he says to do. Amen? And, you know, the Holy Spirit's told me to do some weird things. I, you know, gay, uh, I've told these stories before, but will and grace, I liked the stars in that. I watched the first episode of it, and then the Holy Spirit said, don't watch that show anymore. And then you're home at night and you're flipping through the channels and guess what's on every channel? Will and grace, will and grace, will and grace. I've watched one episode of will and grace and I watched no other episode of will and grace. Now, would I have gone to heaven if I had watched will and grace? Of course, dummy. 
Some woman tried to tell a pastor, the Holy Spirit told her she couldn't eat, ever eat chocolate again or she'd go to hell. I'd say, get thee behind me, Satan. Right, ladies, come on. Get thee behind me, Satan, right now in the name of Jesus. <laughs> now, the Holy Spirit might tell you to give up chocolate for a season. I gave up meat for months, all meat for months. My wife didn't believe I could do it. I came home and told her, I don't know if she remembers, she looked at me like a deer caught in the headlights and said, you can't do that. Those were her exact words. She had such confidence in this great man, mighty man of God. <laughs> you can't do that. I did it. And we went into seven months of revival. Amen. I sowed into the Spirit. Because I obeyed. Would I have gone to heaven had I ate a piece of meat? Yes, dummy. <laughs> Obedience to the Holy Spirit doesn't mean well, I'm disobedient. Oh, hell's going to swallow me whole. I'm going to burn forever. No, you're just not going to be used and you're not going to be led and you're not going to enter into greener pastures. God's opening the door and say, I am the door to the sheep. Here it's open. Come in. Do, 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 do. Not paying any attention to what God is doing or wants to do in your life. Can I get an amen? amen? Now it'll speak to you during praise and worship. Let me tell you something. You can get away with a lot if you'll just learn to worship God. I'm sorry, it'll offend some people, but uh, not only does uh, love cover a multitude of sins, but worship covers a multitude of sins. God loves worshipers. David was by no stretch of the imagination. King David, I talked about him Thursday night. I shocked some of the ladies. Uh, King David, <laughs> King David, man, could be a stone-cold killer. He was, dude. I mean, read your Bible. Uh, and David had a lustful eye, and David could be a stone-cold killer, and David could be all kinds of things. But you know what David was? David was a man after God's own heart because David was a, also a stone cold, on fire, all his might, worshiper of God. His baby dies. He's been fasting and in prayer for uh, days. He's in sackcloth and ashes. The elders are worried he's going to lose his mind because his baby's just died. And they're whispering. And David says, the baby's died, hadn't it? And they say, yes. And David says, prepare my bath and my clothes. I'm going to go to the tabernacle and worship God. I'm going to go to the tabernacle and worship God. Come on. That's a worshiper, folks. That's somebody who said, my baby's just died. What am I going to do? I'm going to go worship God. My wife's just left me. What am I going to do? I'm going to go worship God. They just fired me. What am I going to do? I'm going to go worship God. I just had a car wreck. What am I going to do? I'm going to go worship God. The doctor said I got cancer. What am I going to do? I'm going to go worship God. I'm going to go worship God. Amen? When you will worship the Lord, when you will learn to be a praiser, when you will learn to be a worshiper, let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit moves in praise and worship. God's presence comes down in praise and worship. Amen? God can do things in your life in praise and worship in seconds, in minutes that it would take months otherwise. Months. If you'll just praise him, if you'll just worship him. Go to church. I'm going to wrap this up. The rest of it will finish later if, if I go on with it. Uh, how do we hear his voice? You need to be in a church. Amen. You need to be in a church. And you need to stay in the fold he puts you in and not follow a bunch of other dumb sheep out. Amen. You know, the only time you should go out... you. You should be doggone 100% and, and 10 times over sure that God's leading you out of a place he's put you. Because what most people do is they just follow a few others. And what happens when you follow a few others, guess what? You're away from the, sh the under shepherd he put you under. You're away from the fold he put you in. 
Amen. You're awake.